Oh, we were, hey, we're filming. Oh gosh, we've already <laughs> started. 42 seconds in. All right, so what's happening, Stu? We're driving back after another uh, cracking four day tour, uh, which has been, uh, where have we been, Mark? Oh my <laughs> God, I can't even remember the first date. Where have we been? Oh. Okay, well, okay first of all, it's two in the morning and we've been on the road for four days, so we understandably don't even know what our names are anymore. Um, uh, well, where were we today? Let's start with today. We've just driven back from... <laughs> uh, Witham. Essex. Witham. Witham. Yes, we were in Witham tonight. Actually, to me, it was a highlight of the night. I apologize to all the fans because I played like a dog tonight, but... <laughs> Other than that, I, we really had a good time. It was a lovely room, 1930s uh, restored theater. It just oozed atmosphere. Yeah. What did you think? Uh, yeah, it, it was one of those seated shows, like, uh, like last night that we'll get onto in a minute, which had energy from the from, from the get go. So people were really as soon as Russ walks out for the beginning of the first track, you hear the whooping you and the hollering. Yeah, you knew it was going to be good. Yeah, you knew it was for a good one. Yeah, beautiful looking place. Uh, really enthusiastic, friendly people, which, which was lovely. We had a few issues with sound. Yeah, that was weird. We had a lot of issues with sound, but yeah. it, it wasn't anybody's fault. It would just seem like that venue had some sort of weird electromagnetic soup, and we just could not solve it. Uh, so my guitar, when I plug into a, a high gain patch, you get a, and I don't think anyone would have noticed actually because we were going through it with a fine tooth comb. Yeah. Uh, we have our, our man George on, on sound with George us. Vays. George Vase. George Vase. Cracking work, George. But our main man, uh, um, uh, Mark Payne, uh, was otherwise engaged this week, so he sent off sent off George, who, who, who did a great job, a, of course. A fantastic job, yeah, George. Yeah. Wonderful dude. He was having a crack at fixing that sound, but yeah, so he, we were being very particular about it. So I think we were over making more of a, yeah, a deal of it in our own heads. But that's what you got to do. That's what the levels of professionalism dictate that you should do is you know, attention to detail. Yeah. But, but yeah. Yeah, good show, uh, yeah, decent performance. And um, last night, where were we? Uh, we were in Deal la the last night, so that we were in uh, d uh, Dover? Or, it's no, in Kent. Kent, sorry. It's on the Kent coast. Yeah. Uh, it was close to Dover, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, just a little way further on. Another lovely little theatre. Thanks to the guys there for looking after us. And, um, uh, yeah, really quirky little sort of arty theatre, the Astor Theatre. So we, it was the Astor Hall, whatever. Yeah, that, that, that was lovely too. Uh, another really vibrant sitting down crowd. So Kent and Essex. Yeah. Good work. That was good. Yeah, yeah great. And stuff. Um, it was that. That was another different atmosphere, a different type of venue. But it, it was um, the lovely staff there, and I think what was his name, James, that was yeah. really, really super helpful. Let us use the kitchen, and that was. Um, yeah, it was quite cool. And then um, the crowd, yeah, lovely crowd. And I know this, uh, we're not in it to, to, you know, sell merchandise to people, but it was interesting that the last two nights that people really, really, um, you know, came up to chat to us at the merchandise desk and got a lot of um, shirts and mugs and stuff like that. So it was just really nice support from those two crowds. And then where were we the night before that? We were we were down in like Honiton. Honiton, that was Honiton. it. So we moved away from, from, from Devon, yeah. And um, what was the deal in Honiton? <sighs> Sorry, deal. Another yeah. deal pun. We, we were getting through them all. Honiton was... Um... Ah, I remember. I can, uh, it, it was Art Centre. and art, The Beehive. The, the Beehive. Bee oh, it was lovely. And they, were, they had a really nice... Um, volunteer staff and they were bending over backwards to make us comfortable brought us teas and coffees and like I know probably to a lot of people that doesn't sound like anything but when you go across the country like we've done and you go to venue after venue it's really really nice to have um, just those little bits of hospitality just make everything better and it was a beautiful load in as well wasn't oh, it? Just we've been so lucky Mark's going to be really delighted that he's missed four dates with flat level the load best. in the best yeah <laughs> you would have loved it Mark you missed out on that for sure yeah yeah it was a cracker it was really good yeah and then the, the nice little video of us uh, our promotional video showing in the foyer in the beehive uh, for, for, for punters on the way in so that's kind of fun to see see the, uh, that kind of thing going on and um, yeah and then the first night Chippenham Chippenham. Is that right? Yes. Chippenham. And 
was so long ago now. It seems like a week ago. <laughs> is that where it's um, of, Is it Somerset? It's, it's around Somerset. Yeah. Um, however, and that was a Thursday night, and oh, I, yeah. I think it was a. It, I just remember, like, wow, you know, for a, for a Thursday night crowd, they seem to be up for it. Uh, I think actually we we probably played one of our better shows that night, didn't we? Because you. Used to, oh, sorry, folks. Technical difficulties. We're back. We're back in action. Um. Uh, Chippenham, yeah, Chippenham, and what was the theatre called? <laughs> was that the Neils Theatre? The Neils, that's it. Yeah, yeah, cool stuff. Yeah, and did good, good for the guys to come out and force. Oh, four sellouts! Woo! Four sellouts, four in, sellouts a row. in a row. Yeah, good awesome. stuff. And you're talking about merch sales. We're travelling home. I think I've got three shirts left in there, and a few of our bottle opener key rings. But the CDs, the mugs, the shirts have just, just flown off the shelf. For the, uh, Shelf. And that's just you kind of have a shelf, yeah, and a table. Yeah. So that's I mean just the level of enthusiasm we're born out in that. So that's really cool. Uh, so thanks for supporting us on that. I know people do it partially they want to own some of our lovely, beautiful merchandise, but largely because they want to support us and they value what we do, which is a cool feeling. Yeah. Really cool feeling. And I just felt like that last run, quite like the scum. <laughs> Thing happening, and I couldn't, um, I couldn't figure out where it was coming from. And 
the paranoid musician in me automatically assumed it was me and I thought my bass was feeding back so during playing the figure in Los Endos I just decided I would fix the bass problem which wasn't feeding back but it was just dumb I just had a lapse of concentration and tonight I honestly I think I was enjoying it too much that I took my eye off the ball with the ball a few times happens happens so I but just the flip, the flip side of that is none of us enjoy it and we all think far too hard about the notes we're playing yeah. and not about the joy we're spreading yeah. and that's a, that's a tr uh, balance you've got to get right we've, we've got to be serious about playing the right stuff we've got to be not too serious about it in terms of having a good time and enjoying it yeah because that that is the feedback which comes across most universally of people saying you and every gig a few people will say it you guys clearly really enjoy what you're doing and that more so no one ever says you guys are good at what you're doing no they do but they <laughs> you say, guys are crap but you really enjoy yourselves <laughs> I really appreciate the fact you bungling fools yeah. enjoying like, trying to play this music <laughs> thanks man <laughs> but they do they, and, it, and it, that's not that's not bullshit that's not us making up being stage trained actors that's us thinking there's no better way to be spending our time and earning a living than, than exactly what we're doing right now. Yeah. And there's no disguising or hiding it. And we're, those are genuine smiles, genuine good times. And looking around when we do have a gaff and, and chuckling. And Tony's... Yeah. When, he, when he's chuckling away. <laughs> it's all real, man. Yeah, if you ever if you ever wonder, oh, did somebody make a mistake there? They did. Just go and... Yeah, first of all, <laughs> they did. And then look at Tony. And if he's going like this, then you know, you know one of us is... Made a big mistake. Um, so for me, musical highlight tonight again. I hit Chris. Don't get a big head. <laughs> fourth night of the run, and he just sounded fucking great. Excuse my French, but I just thought it was great, and he was um, yeah. It, it was just nice. I mean, we're all tired. Anytime you do, um, you're out on a run, and you get to the fourth night. I don't care how much sleep you got or how close the venues and easy the load-ins were. You're still working like a dog, and. It, it's hard. It's hard work, and uh, we yeah. don't carry any spare weight in this band. Everyone no. walks in and does something. Everybody's working, so um, it was just really nice because obviously he's sort of the conduit through which the music is presented, and it's just uh, man, it's just quite awesome to to check out the the um, energy that you can see him backstage. He's obviously flagging, and then hits the stage and just boom. He's, he, and to be fair, the crowd really gave us some put some wind in our sails tonight that was really nice like you said as soon as Russ came out on the stage yeah yeah it, it, it's a real life interaction of the energy it sounds like such sort of vague waffly nonsense but it's so true that the energy you feel from the crowd we, you, you it do use it, it. Yeah. you really do use it and uh, you're part of a real life experience uh, which is really cool it was nice to have uh, because the last run that we came came back from we didn't have our drummer rust with us we had yeah. a very very capable dep called uh um jed hawksworth who is did an admirable job um but because we're a family it's also just it's really nice to have rusty russ wilson behind us and smacking the skins and smiling and just just it just felt like we were we were um you know a nice a comfort level again and I don't know, I'm just trying to think of other highlights. Well, can me. we talk about the kitchen of Stan and Ollie? Oh, yes. First of all, it was Stan's kitchen this time. <laughs> uh, but I do have two things. I've got a special surprise for the guys. I'm going to do some chana, and I'm going to do African sweet potato stew, like your mum did, but with coconut yeah. milk. And I'm going to do it. It's good. You're going to love it. So, um, We're going to need some, uh, some, some uh, context on that, though. <laughs> okay, so for those of you that don't know, we do the catering now it's been a new development but um, when you're out on the road you can only take so many crisps and sandwiches. You, you sandwiches and stuff like that obviously everybody loves crisps and sandwiches but um, you find that your energy levels are a little bit different when you have fresh cooked food and so we've um, sort of developed a, a plan and Stu's put a lot of work into getting all the materials together and his mum, God bless her, Maggie McPhee, but, uh, gave a, donated a, um, a cooler box for us. So Stu on this run has pre-prepared all of the food and frozen it. And we've taken out portions already divvied up. We've got rice with us. We've got fruit, vegetables, salad, uh, all the condiments. He's got a, a locker box full of crockery and 
So we just basically have a traveling kitchen and a microwave, which tonight he <laughs> Stu discovered that after a long and arduous battle to try and find a flight case for our microwave, which was unsuccessful, um, found out that our merch case that he takes out with us is the absolute perfect size for it. So. See, this is all on those memes of what people think life is like in rock and roll. It's and not. it's a picture of us backstage with scantily clad girls, <laughs> yeah, yeah. white powder all over the table. And what life is really like, me trying to find a very specifically sized flight case to put a microwave in. That's a lot more <laughs> like what really happens. But yeah, it turns out it really fits in this. Are we going the right way here? I have no idea. Sandhurst, that looks right, that seems right. Yeah, this is going to go yeah. to Farnham. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, it turns out it fits in the suitcase I had all along. But there it is. And on the menu this uh, this week has been vegan chili made with pea protein mince, uh, a vegetable tikka curry, uh, yeah, and a chicken and chorizo ragu thing. And <laughs> yeah, but Martin being vegan didn't have any of that, of course. But uh, yeah, uh, and the, the chili, chili and garlic broccoli. Ah, oh, everybody really loved it, similar. anyways. Everybody loved it. But it's nice. It's, it's just good fun to feel like we've, we've not only you know playing nice big shows and this you know, musically going well, that our quality of life is good and that we can still enjoy eating well as well. And we're not, you know, uh, we're not compromising on our quality of life because that's important. Right? It's actually a really nice, um, like because sometimes people go and do their own thing, but it's like a nice coming together. We eat, just yeah. everybody getting together and, Same and thing, having out. a chat, hanging out. It's nice. Should I plug it in? Ah, it's alright. You've got okay. 10% battery. We have a low power alert if you're wondering why my finger is there. Uh, okay, so should we do the wrap up? Yeah, I mean, it's the penultimate leg of the entire Duke tour, so. It's, it's emotional times and it's going to be it's going to be really emotional next week when we're in where are we next yeah, week? Uh, Liver, um, we're in Nuneaton uh, yeah. first of all all you people in the, in around Nuneaton we would like more and more of our Nuneaton fans to come to our shows so spread the word tell your friends and let's get a nice packed house in Nuneaton fortunately Liverpool two nights in a row complete sellouts I think weeks maybe months ago so months ago yeah so we we always look forward to playing Liverpool anyway it's like a homecoming for us in a way and two Tony and, and, and Chris live up there as well so it is homecoming for them and it's the last anyone's ever gonna see of at least Genesis Visible Touch playing the Duke tour in its entirety not gonna happen again no nope. And it's, uh, it's kind of the reason we put the band together in the first place, is the idea of playing that set. Ah, so, wait a second. Sorry, this has been a really long video, but before we wrap it up, maybe we should explain the story of why are we doing the Duke tour? Yeah, very, very briefly, uh, the premise on which the whole band was first put together is where uh, unnamed agents uh, uh, <laughs> uh, got us all on board with the idea of recreating the 1980 Duke tour. And this is, what, five years ago, six years ago? And, um, and we said, hey, what a, what a great idea that is. What incredibly complicated, challenging, but fun material. So we all learned it, got together, and I think the second time we were all in a room together, performed the whole thing to friends and family as a show, which if you know what the Duke Tour involves, is quite an undertaking. Uh, then after a, a year or two of realizing that the direction, that the management team, uh, or the management team themselves, weren't really... Uh, Competent? I suppose it's, it wasn't a way we were going to go, so we were going to take things our own way, but instead of starting off with something which is quite niche, quite specific, we were going to just play hits and fan favourites and get our feet under the table and get the ball rolling first, and then do this uh, this ultimate goal, if you like, of the Duke, recreation of the Duke Tour. And it just so happened it came about the right time to be doing it 40 years on from Duke itself. So yeah, it's, 40th anniversary. In a nutshell, there's a lot more to that. Uh, and, and just... Um, to let, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag, so to speak, but just so that you'd know, um, people that are watching that have come to see us on the Duke Tour, on the second half of 2020, what are we going to be doing, Stu? We're doing Duke at 40, so it's still a celebration of the 40th uh, year, uh, 40 years on from the Duke album, but we're going to be playing a few... Uh, a few more hits or songs uh, from the Duke album along with some of the other better known tracks and just basically we'll be going a bit more uh, creative control over what we play because this if you don't know what we're on about what about the Duke tour is the exact set list that Genesis played in their theatre tour of 1980 that we've been playing up until now and that was a good time to finally mention that yeah. um, for the second half of the year it's going to be a celebration of, of the music of the album Duke along with a few other big hits and stuff as well so. and, and a cool thing that um 
we might be playing some songs off the album that Genesis never played live, which that could be cool. And unless we rehearse them, and they suck balls, in which case we don't. Play. Yeah. <laughs> so that that's why I say maybe. <laughs> and then um, yeah, it's going to be nice to throw some hits and fan favorites in the second half of the set. So the top half of the set will most likely be. Duke at 40, so we'll celebrate some of the songs that we um, that we played tonight, but definitely not the whole set. Um, and we're going to be playing some of the more familiar songs that people have been longing for, but that we obviously couldn't play because we were bound to do the Duke tour. So we hope everybody enjoyed it. If you were wondering why we did it or what the thinking behind it was, it was actually a personal challenge for us, kind of a monkey that we needed to get off our back. Yeah. And also, it's a springboard to a good idea um, that you might see more of the 40th anniversary or the anniversary um, celebrations of some of the great tours and albums that Genesis did and that we all love. And, you know, we're always going to play some longs at the shows. We all love the long uh, prog epics. And, those will always feature in our set, but also we want to play um, some of the more, um, you know, hits and, and fan favorites that we are we uh, have done in the past and that people call for. I mean, how many times have we heard Domino, Home by the Sea, yeah, um, Abacab, Abacab, of Land of Confusion? Obviously, we couldn't play those, but we we will be back to doing those at the second half of the year. So big thank you to everybody who's supported us in every gig that we've done in the past who's bought tickets for our gigs in the future and all the people that supported us on this last uh, four gig run just it it's really means the world to us to have that level of support and enthusiasm for something that we feel enthusiastic about as well yep so final thoughts just thanks for showing out in such great numbers really good to see you all and uh, familiar faces and new ones and please come back and see us again we look forward to catching up with you there big love from gvt guys we'll see you next time <laughs>